Howdy folks, EJ here. Welcome back to the more land of that. Ah. Oh, Joseph's Folly. Interesting. This one was a, a series that I was going to make like really dramatic and like polished and stuff. And then Bitstrips like just decided to go out of business or whatever. And I was like, oh no. So I never really got to work on it. But let's see what I had and try to remember what the story was so I can talk more about it. So this one is not really meant to be as funny, more uh, dramatic or whatever. Introduction. <laughs> I guess it's an old man talking, so. My name is unimportant, but if you must know, it's Joseph. No, I'm not that handsome young man in the background. I'm the ugly old guy in the foreground. I've lived a long life and I should be happy, but I'm still haunted by my past. I reminisce about what could have and should have been as opposed to what was, and I regret. I was once a happy young boy with all the potential in the world, but I wasted my life on some darn fool adventures. I could have had so much more, but I made some horrible choices. Some horrible friends. Murderers. But I was no better, except for the fact that I only killed the killers. I followed orders. I was trying to help people rather than rob them. Ironically, I was robbing some people of their lives, including myself. But the past is the past, and dwelling in it only brings more depression. I am at the end of my life, and I have no more future. I cannot change my past. Unless I use the present time in a very specific, very dangerous way. Alright. <laughs> I like some of it. It's cool. I'm remembering the story. But there's a little bit of dumb puns. <laughs> and look here, this is my, uh, like, my Bitstrips avatar, like, they make you uh, create a per or a little character that's supposed to represent yourself. Why did I use myself there? Like, I wasn't going to have myself as the main character here. I don't understand why there's a ghostly me there. Weird. Let's take a look at the next one. Hendrickson! Fire of your awesome hearts and doohickeys! I've changed my mind about testing your latest invention. Joseph? You can't be serious. I've never been more serious in my life. I've had it! Had it with everything! Ah. Joseph, I know you're upset, but please don't shout. You just made me drop a corrosive chemical on the lab floor. I know, I'm sorry. Don't step in it. Now, what did you want? I want to test out that invention of yours. That one I refused to try all those years ago. You mean the time machine? Well, that was an invention from a while ago. I put it in storage because no one was brave enough to test it. What makes you suddenly want to try changing the past? What's happened to you over the past few years? Would your wife and kids consent to this? Uh, they might, if they had ever existed. My life went from being lovely and great to being miserable and horrible in the blink of an eye. Kinda like that broom of yours. Oh, I see. What happened to your skin, by the way? It's very pale. It's part of an experiment I'm working on. It doesn't appear to be working, though, so I'll reverse it shortly. Now, if you'll excuse me, I have some messes to clean, time machines to unpack, and thinking to do. Come back tomorrow, and we can reiterate the possible dangers involved with my machine. Bring your ninja gear tomorrow if you decide to go through with this. I'll get you some anti-aging stuff. But be warned, if you try to meddle with time, it may be very difficult, or even impossible, to restore things to the way they were. And if you aren't careful, you could rip apart the very fabric of the universe. So be careful. Until tomorrow, Joseph. Yeah, I, this is a weird story. <laughs> <sighs> I had only wanted to change the past, not relive it. But Henriksen knew what he was talking about. Mm -hmm. Scanning. Recognizing. Target recognized. <laughs> oh, the dumb effects. <laughs> uh, it was really hard to do any sort of like special effects or custom art. You had to use props that they had. So it was really difficult to do a lot of things. Uh, and I had to like make do with what I could. So I just have a TV floating there for no reason. Uh, good times. Sorry, back to the story. I suppose it made sense that I would need to relive the past in order to change it, but I had some things I would rather not repeat. There were some secrets I never wanted to reveal. My mask, my cover story, my other identity, my costume, my old troublesome friend, me. Hmm. I have actually kind of forgotten, like, the whole mask story or whatever. So what I remember is, uh... This dude used to be like an assassin working for a company or something, and he was like, as, as it said, killing murderers or something like that. Uh, I don't think that was really the important part, though, but he had a co-worker, that, that old guy that you saw. So, honestly, the whole whatever happens in the past, I don't think that was that important. But um, the whole twist of the story was going to be that 
that old guy who's with the girl. So what, what actually happened in the past was that Joseph ended up with the girl that he wanted to be with, but then that old guy decided to use the time machine to change things to the way they are now that you're seeing in the story, where Joseph didn't get the girl and that old guy did, and Joseph's upset with his life. So now Joseph is going back into the past and reversing it again, and it's going to be all sorts of craziness. I don't know if I even explained that right, but it was going to be convoluted and strange, and actually I kind of want to revisit the story maybe, because it's an interesting concept of like what happens if multiple people are trying to go back and change the same events multiple times and like what would happen. Um, but what actually happened in the past, like with the whole ninja outfit or working for this shady company and I don't know, <laughs> I don't know if it's a government company or whatever, but uh, yeah, I don't know what the whole deal was with that. That I was just kind of making that up as I went, but the whole idea was like time travel is interesting and I like doing time travel stuff. So yeah, let's continue the story. <laughs> ah, Joseph, I see you've gone through with your decision. Of course, I see you've turned your skin back. You look like a ghost yesterday, Chang. Noted. I brought the suit too, even though I swore I'd never wear it again. Now, where's this magical time machine of yours? It's science, not magic, Joseph. Magic is impossible. You know that our super secret institution only deals with pushing the limits of reality, not redefining it. I fail to see the difference. Ah, uh, never mind then. Come along and watch out for the hole you made in the floor yesterday. This had better not just be a joke, Chang. Why? Why do you suddenly have a desire to try my machine? That's none of your business. I have my secrets. Joseph, look, I know we never were very close, even before you retired. But if you want to go back and change something and rewrite history, I'm afraid I'm going to have to ask for a specific reason. Especially after... I don't know what happened to his family. I don't remember what my backstory was. I had thoughts in my head, but I don't remember them now. That was years ago. After what? Never mind. I can't tell you. I understand, but I still can't tell you everything. Very well. I just wish we could catch up a bit before we leap back into emergency after retirement endeavors together. It's been so many years since we last talked, and I want to erase those years. What the heck is this piece of junk? And that's the last published one I had, so all I had... Uh, after that was an unpublished one, which was going to be like the final thoughts of his before like using the machine, but it only has one panel. <laughs> You're telling me that this hunk of trash is your stupendous, incredible, miraculous invention for redefining time? Hey, I don't care much about stylishness as long as my experiments work. <laughs> it's literally just a couch, some solar panels, and a desk with an iPad on it. Oh, uh, bit strips. It didn't have very many uh, fancy props to use, so I had to make do with what I could. <laughs> it's it's not the worst thing I've ever read, I guess. <laughs> it's a bit heavy-handed, but yeah, that's the end of what I had before Bits Chips died on me. I don't remember what the rest of the story was going to be like, but I'm kind of interested to see what it ends up like. So let me know if you ever want to hear the end of that story, either like us making up the story together in a live stream or something like that because i've been doing live streams lately and you should check them out all right that's the end of joseph's folly let's go to something even more pretentious for no reason with a terrible medium that doesn't work very well now we're gonna look at art <laughs> this is the mask it's my character's face looking all happy and stuff but then half of it's all shriveled and dying and like cracked if you take off the mask then there's like a sad person underneath even though he looks happy on the outside that's supposed to be like the idea anyway and there's like a storm in his eye and a tear i don't know how you appear on the outside how you really are on the inside oh i'm so emo this this is based off a drawing that i did when i was sad and depressed and emo and stuff and it actually looks pretty good i don't know if it looks good in this binder but it kind of looks like me and it kind of looks realistic or whatever so yeah <laughs> that's that <laughs> i need to draw more it's fun so yeah for some reason i decided to put this online so people could validate me and i didn't have any other mediums for which to put things online at that point so this was the only way that i could like show off my drawing or whatever so i was like oh i'll make a bit strip about it and believe it or not it was incredibly difficult to put those shapes on because like with bit strips, you have uh, you have everything as like an object, and you can't really like take off parts of objects and like customize them or whatever. You basically like if I had my character's face, the entire face is there, and then I have to like put other things on top of it to hide it and make it look different like that. 
I remember it was very difficult because there was no shape like a lot of those things. So I had to like custom get like lightning bolts and like uh, circles and other shapes and clouds and whatever to try to like make it f have the right shape there. And that's why all the lines look janky and you can't tell what's going on. <laughs> anyway, uh, let's look at a different one. I see you. Oh, <laughs> that's just the eye of Sauron right there. And I made it in bit strips for some reason. I don't have much more to say on that. I love how Mount Doom is like perfectly in focus in the background though. I mean, it's not terribly bad. It looks interesting. I like it. A troubled person's conflict. Yeah, I was actually depressed back then and like it lasted for a long while and I'm only just now starting to get better finally. Like I'm actually happy for the first time in years, which is great. But uh, back then I was having problems. Even so, I'm going to make fun of myself because it's all emo and it's like trying to express it in a medium that's maybe I shouldn't be making fun of this. You know what? If you're depressed, there are, there are goodness in life and I'm sorry that you're depressed. Talk to people because there are many people who are willing to help and, and I don't know how to be encouraging in a video where I'm talking about being depressed, but we love you and you're good and your family loves you and good stuff. I'm bad at encouragement, but I hope that was helpful. Anyway, apparently, even though I'm in like this nice, happy place, uh, I still am only feeling the the pain and worry and regret of my life. Let's move on. Oh gosh, more, more sadness. Yay. What is it? A blessing or an inescapable curse? And it's a heart made of chains with a broken ring in the middle and an arrow and bleeding and a time clock. I'm a little confused about the symbolism here. I guess I understand like the conflict between having a relationship being good versus having it be not so good. I'm so confused. Hmm. I I'm looking at it as though it's someone else's piece of art at this point. <laughs> Seriously, why are all of these depressed? This one is me as an old man with all of my to-do lists and like a bajillion things in the world. And I'm looking out the window at some people like having fun and doing their things and stuff. While my peers progressed, I stayed behind to gain more wisdom. But now I consider it folly and I regret. And I'm using my old man character, like me as an old man, as Joseph and still folly. I'm so confused. <laughs> it all's connected and I don't know what's happening. So yeah, apparently I wasted my life working while everyone else was having fun and I regret it. I think that's the takeaway here. Oh boy, another depressed one. My favorite. So apparently uh, as a child I was feeling like I was all sheltered and stuff by my parents and they were like not allowing me to see TV shows or anything and like I didn't know anything about the outside world because of it and therefore all my friends were making fun of me for not knowing what the heck was going on in life so they were like come out of there you wacky freak box boy expand your horizons not everything of the world is evil yeah be like us give up your uniqueness and become uncomfortable but normal for some reason there's mount everest on top of my box as well so i'm living under a rock that's really big and i'm stuck in my little box of not being able to see what what's outside in the world and I'm stuck in my little box that I was raised in, which is why they called me Box Boy because I didn't know anything. And they actually did call me Box Boy for a while, like my friends in real life, so yeah. Meanwhile, my parents were like, you must be protected from bad TV shows, websites, choices, and friends, yourself, the possibilities of car crashes, disease, evil of any sort, and anything that isn't already in your room. So continue living a sheltered life so people will continue to think that you've lived under a rock when they talk to you. So yeah, I'm not sure exactly why I made this Maybe I was feeling conflicted at one point, but usually I'm just like, I don't know about these things and it's annoying, but I don't really care that I don't know. I don't know. Please don't be another depressed one. Please don't be another depressed one. Please don't be another. Hmm. I'm not sure I fully understand this one. So a faceless family? What does it mean? I don't know anymore. I can't remember. Does it represent how I felt that my family? Uh, the little kid has a red shirt, which is like my avatar. Or does it represent... I don't know anymore. <laughs> Yay, a non-depressed one. Let's look at it. Thoughts. 
Growing deeper and farther in every direction, gaining understanding and expelling difficult problems, always expanding into farther recesses of pensiveness. And it's a brain growing a tree of brain electricity into a, a rock or a cloud? I'm not sure. I guess it's, I think it's a rock and it's like cracking it apart with the thoughts that destroy problems. Also, I used a plate of upside down purple spaghetti. So now I can't unsee that. <laughs> it's a plate of spaghetti as a brain. I had to work really hard to make things look artsy when really they're just like props that you can't do much with. All right, we're done with all the art and we're done with the serious Joseph's Folly thing. Let's actually do some fun things now, hopefully. Sorry about the depression. And with that, we have come to a close of these bit strips. See you next time where we explore more bit strips.